In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to get your DJI drone repaired by DJI. Oh! Hey guys, so I've got bad news. I crashed my drone. So I don't know what really happened. It was just flying, it started drifting to the left, hit the side of a building, and then fell 11 floors. Luckily, it landed on a patch of grass and I was able to retrieve it. I broke the propellers off, the battery flew off, and the worst part, the gimbal broke. I was so devastated. We just landed in Okinawa, Japan. This was supposed to be the maiden voyage. And then less than 30 seconds, boom, crash. Either the wind took it or something was wrong with the IMU. Before I could redirect the drone from hitting the building, it was too late. Drone fell from the sky. Now luckily it fell on some grass. Oh. The camera looks like it's damaged and this has some dirt. Realized. And then the battery fell out. It shouldn't be on like this, yeah. So I think the camera lens is broken because you can see that there's a lot of damage on the propeller. So we've got some problems. Right here, you got some damage. Pretty good. It falls just this camera now. So I've just bent this thing in place. It looks like during the impact, this lens thing bent this way. And so it wasn't able to freely move like this, but now I think I've bent it back in place. Oh, this is kind of a stressful moment. So let me just turn it on and see if I can get the gimbal at least working. So I'm not getting a picture and the aircraft motor gimbal is overloaded. I tried to look up a solution on YouTube. More than likely, it was a connection between the gimbal and the circuit board on the Mavic. There was tons of videos online on how to fix the gimbal, but it required you to buy parts and then take apart the drone itself, which I wanted to avoid at all costs. I did test the drone afterwards to see if it would still fly. And luckily, the drone flew, but I couldn't get a video feed. But it does show how durable these drones are. I was actually pretty determined to to get these aerial shots in Okinawa so I called around to all the electronic stores in Okinawa to see if I could buy a new drone but they were all out of stock. In hindsight I'm glad that the drones were unavailable because I was able to get the drone repaired within a few weeks. In this video I'm gonna walk you through how to get your DJI drone repaired by DJI. Note that I'm in Japan, but I'm assuming that the process for repairing the drone is very similar to all across the world, except for Hong Kong where DJI is headquartered. All right, let's start. First, you have to contact DJI. Easiest way is to send them an email. In my case, I sent them an email in English, but they responded in Japanese. So I wrote back to them in Japanese, explaining my situation. Probably best not to lie in this situation because the drone has logs and they'll pretty much be able to figure out if you're lying or not. They'll actually give you an option for DJI to inspect the drone to see if it was a manufacturer defect, at which case they might actually pay for the repair and replacement of the drone itself. This requires having to send the drone all the way to DJI in Hong Kong. The analysis takes about three weeks and another seven to ten days to fix it. That means I would have been out more than a month without the drone. Oh yeah, and the inspection alone cost 13,000 yen, which I think is their hourly fee. I didn't want to bother with all that, so I got DJI in Japan to assess the damages and provide the cost to me directly. I wanted the drone back as soon as possible. Once I confirmed which option I wanted to go with, then I sent the drone directly to DJI Japan. They asked me to include the battery, the controller, and the damaged propellers. Also, you'll have to fill out a damage report and include that in the package. I'll leave a link below so you guys have it for your reference. A day later, the drone was delivered to DJI and they sent me an inventory of what they actually received. Pretty cool. And they were thorough enough to document that I left a memory card inside of the drone. Much appreciated. Super quick. And DJI sent me a case number and URL to track the progress. Pretty professional if you ask me. After a few days later, DJI finished the assessment and they quoted me the repair and parts costs. At this point, you have the option to have DJI send you back the drone without a new repair or have them proceed with the repair. One strange thing though, if you decide to have them send it back to you without repair, it looks like they still charge you for the time they spent doing the assessment. It costs 13,000 yen plus shipping fees. So reviewing the quote, 
the total cost came to about 23,000 yen. Gimbal protection cover, 960 yen. Two Mavic propellers, 972 yen. Gimbal arm module, 7,080 yen. Repair service fee, 12,960 yen per hour. Shipping, 750 yen at a total of 22,722 yen. All things considered, I think it's pretty fair. I replied quickly to DJI and let them know that I wanted to move forward with the repairs. I didn't receive a response from DJI, which was pretty weird. They've been pretty good at replying to me within 24 hours. Then I reread the quote that they had sent to me via email and realized that to approve the repairs, you needed to send them an email to a specific email address. You couldn't just reply to the email in the quote. Good thing to note for you guys that are looking to repair your drone. So as soon as I emailed DJI at the correct address, they started working on repairing the drone. One thing to note, in Japan, they didn't require prepayment. They ask you to pay the delivery person when the drone arrives at your home. This may vary from country to country. Three days later, I received the drone. Overall, the process was pretty straightforward and the repair progress site was super helpful for me. All in all, it took 21 days for me to get my drone repaired from whence I reported it to when I received it back. Probably would have taken five or six days less if I had read the quote correctly. Now, let's see what's in the box. Lots of foam packing as expected. Oh, what's this? Ah, it's a note saying that the serial number for the drone has changed. So for example, if I registered it with insurance, I'll need to update the provider. Also, if I have the drone serial number registered anywhere else, then I'll need to update the serial number at those places. Good to know. Oh, and this looks like the original report repair I filled out. And two devices bubble wrapped. First one is a drone. All right, looks good. They definitely replaced the propellers. I noticed that. I also noticed that they put a sticker on the battery. Looks like the case number. Also has a QR code, probably for the tracking system. And the gimbal looks good. And in here, the remote. Same as before. Hmm, some of the scratches on the drone before are missing. Maybe they switched the whole entire drone. Interesting, maybe that's why the serial number changed. At least it didn't cost extra. Now that I've got the drone back, let's test it out. But first things first. Let's charge up the batteries and make sure that we have all the updates downloaded so we don't get outside and sit there for an hour performing updates. Yep, looks like we need to update the firmware. Good thing. I checked. Oh, and looks like I have to update the no-fly zone database. Oh, this is unexpected. Looks like I have to reset the drone from the beginning, like give it a new name and set the default controls, probably because it's a new serial number. I just realized all my previous camera and gimbal settings are no longer there. I should have written them down before I got it serviced. I thought it would save it in the app, but it looks like it didn't. Kind of a pain, but good thing we're doing this now before we took it outside. At least now you guys know what to expect. Also, probably a good idea before you get the drone in the air to make sure the gimbal and the IMU settings are calibrated correctly. All right, after that, I think the drone is ready to fly. Check out my next video to see how the first flight goes. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, hit that like button as it helps me out. Also, let me know if you had a similar or different experience with your drone in your country. Leave that in the comment section below. And if you want to see more of my drone videos or my life in Japan, like always, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.